Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I would like to share with you a very beautiful game which is known as the Perle of Wekanze. The game was played between Spanish Grandmaster Roberto Parada and Russian Grandmaster Vadim Svyagintsev. The game was played in 1995 at Huge Vince Open. But before starting the game, please take a look at this position and try to find the winning move for white. I will wait for your answer in the comment section. And now without further ado, let's go for our game and see what happened on the board. Parada opened up with d4 and e6 by Zvegintsev, knight f3, d5, c4, knight f6, where the queens can be declined, knight c3 and c6, black goes for semi-slav defense, e3, knight d7, queen c2, b6, black is choosing a very solid setup, bishop b7, white castles kingside, bishop e7, rook d1, black also castles kingside, and we have e4, d takes e4, knight takes e4, queen c7, knight c3 and c5, yes, black is challenging white center, and wants to open up the light squared bishop's diagonal, but now we have d5, and after e takes d5, c takes d5, white is managing to get an isolated passed pawn on d5. Let's see, how is black going to fight against that beast? a6 was played preventing any possible knight b5 jumps, but this time white is playing knight h4 with knight f5 threats. That's why black played g6, which somewhat weakened black's king's side, and bishop h6 is on the board. Rook e8, queen d2, bishop d6. Now black bishop is coming after this pawn. We have g3, and this time we have b5. Yes, black wants to kick away the defender and win this pawn. That's why white responded with bishop f3, b4, knight e2 and knight e4. Black is attacking white queen and is freeing the f6 square for the second knight. Knight f6 is on the board, knight g2, queen d7, knight e3, rook d8 and bishop g2, which turns out to be a total blunder. Instead of bishop g2, for example, playing a3 and trying to open up the a file could have been better. And then h4, for example, a nice way of acting against any possible queen h3 jumps. And if queen c8, then rook a5, and then white should double up his rooks. The players have equal chances, but in our game after rook d8 we have bishop g2, which allowed black to go for a beautiful combination. You can pause the video and try to find black's next move. Ready? Yes, guys, yes, Vanim Zviaginsen went for a knight sacrifice on f2. King takes f2 and this time we have rook e3, look at these guys. Bishop takes e3 was played, but actually capturing on e3 with the king could have been better. If knight g4 check, then king f3. If knight takes h6, then king f2. And yes, white king is managing to go back on g1. And if knight e3, then queen d3. And after black wins that rook on d1, rook takes d1, rook e8. Although black has an advantage, black has an extra pawn, strong bishop here, but yes, white could have prolonged his resistance, but in our game after rook takes e3, we have bishop takes e3, knight g4 check and king f3, which is losing. Yes, like in the previous line, it was better to move back his king on g1 and give away the bishop and the rook, Although, yes, again, black has an advantage, but this could have been preferable. But in our game, we have king f3. Here is Vyaginsev, won the pawn on h2, announced the check, and after king f2, we have another check, knight g4 check, king f3, and using that the pawn on d5 is pinned, we have queen e6. Yes, there are multiple threats. White played bishop f4, but this time rook e8 is on the board. Queen c4, which allows black to mate in 6. You can pause the video and try to find that brilliant combination which Vadim Zvyagintsev brought into life in a beautiful style. Ready? Here Zvyagintsev played queen e3 check, guys. Yes, he's also sacrificing his queen. Bishop takes e3, 
Rook takes e3, check, king takes g4, the knight is also gone and right now black has only rook and two bishops against so many monsters. But the thing is that white pieces cannot save their king. The white king is in a mating net, we have bishop c8 check, king g5 and this time we have h6 check and after king takes h6, rook e5, Roberto Parada resigned. Yes, with his last move black created double mating threats. For example, if you cover the h5 square, then this time bishop f8 checkmate is coming. That's why after rook e5 we have a resignation. A very impressive game, I think. Words are unable to describe what we have just saw on the board. I'm sure that you have enjoyed this magnificent game. Share it with your friends, make them also know about this beauty. I will see you in my next video.